Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Dak in the Box, and we are playing Alan Wake. I do apologize, it has been a little while since we... I apologize, it's been a little while since we've gotten into this here. Uh, but we're back to it, and I'm gonna just try to keep running the same schedule. Um, in the last episode, if you remember, we had to take out those birds, and then the waitress from the diner gave us a call, and some things happened there. So let's just get right back into this and see where we uh, see what's going on. Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry, the killer. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline is in two days. I found Mr. Wake's pages. Good girl. The three ransom. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay. I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. I had to fix some things. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true. And get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place... All right, sorry. <clears throat> they called it Diver's Isle, but the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. Better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. 
I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Guy walks so slow. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Welcome to... to... Oh, dear. Mr. Wake, I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Please, come in. Hey, this is really good! Rose. Yes? My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah, uh, hey Al? Al, what's... Oh. Barry! What? It's coming for you, hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. Back to work, boy. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. Rose took a day from me. I, I had less than 12 hours me. left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What I'm can I get there. you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. My gun and flashlight were gone. Manuscript page. to find a way... Mr. Randolph liked Rose, that little smile she had, how she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer, but those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble, and they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Hmm. Get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. I don't have my flashlight, so this kind of worries me. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. You're gonna get it now. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move get a muscle up, all over your right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Slane. Right here, you got. 
goddamn maniac! I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Oh no. Stop running. No. Okay, man. Keep your eyes peeled. He's going to try to make it through here. Oh, damn. Hold on. Woo. On the bright side, there's a lot of spotlights, so, like, the police should be my only problem, right? Oh, it looks like there's another page coming up here. Another page. The Dark Presence sleeps. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Oh no. I don't like this. I don't have any way to defend myself. Oh. Oh. Well, uh. Let's make a break for it here. It's getting. Mm. Oh, geez. Okay. I don't like this. I don't like this. Oh, my God. The light went out. It's Wake's doing. Circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Oh no, they found me. <clears throat> this man has to have the most tired legs right now he's just absolutely got to he's been running for weeks or at the very least he's been running for days Uh, go ahead, 
Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. Wheeler's drunk or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that bed had a pretty distinctive whiff of Rhoda Scotch about it. Over. Uh, I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. All right, and I on we go. The tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Perhaps. Oh no. Unnatural shadows climb. Ah, okay. Destroy the gate. Destroy the gate, how? I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Oh. I knew that. There's no power to the searchlight. Okay. Oh. Duh. Coffee thermos. Whoops. All right, through the gate. That was creative. I like that. All right, and then I'm going to use uh, the radio station as my cutting off point then. So when I get there, that's when I'll end this video. situation. Now. Fuck. Oh, man. It's Bill Peabody, Pat. 
What's on your mind, Mill? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's it's a gonna make a run for it. Oh my god, they're all over the place. Ow. Ow. Oh man. Another police car up here. I have one flashbang left and I'm almost dead. And I'm almost there. Come on. Run, Alan. Run, Alan. Oh. I hope Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. All right. Let's go grab this. We'll go in and talk to Pat Main, and then that's going to be the end of this episode. you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Nowhere to run now, Jimmy Brown. You got it away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. All right, everybody. I know this is kind of a weird thing, but uh, that, that cutscene kind of ended abruptly. That's because I ran out of space. Hang on. Anyway, that cutscene ended kind of abruptly because I ran out of space on my hard drive. So basically, uh, he shot into the radio station because he's a psychopath and um, we're still running. So if you made it all the way through this video, I appreciate you very much. Um, I know this was a little bit shorter, but that's fine uh and then we'll do the next one and we're just gonna keep this rolling so like the video subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you can get notified when new videos drop and i will see you guys next time